should you get and build stainless? Short answer, probably. Long answer. This entire video. そちらの皆さんそんな警戒しないでくれよあれなんて言うの俺はただの平凡なエンジニアだからさみんな覚えといてくれ全員揃って帰ってくるぞ勝利は全てのロンギニーム人のものだ Feist, codename Stainless, is a six-star artificer supporter from Victoria. Came from the industrial district of Highbury in Londonium. And he is Catherine's grandson. A bright and friendly guy in his twenties. Who worked in a Victorian military factory for almost ten years. Although he is an ordinary factory worker. But because of Victoria's advanced machine engineering and weapon. And his familiarity with tools and machines from a young age. It is said his engineering expertise is no less than a graduate machine engineering student from Colombia. After the Sarkas occupation in Londonium, he refused to make weapons that will be used against his fellow Victorian and decided to join the Self Salvation Corps, using his handmade machines to drive away the invaders from his homeland and bring back the simple yet happy life he once knew. At some point after he met with Rhodes Island, He signed a long-term cooperation with us as an engineering operator and frontline team. He's popular among other ops in the engineering department. And even Closure is worried he will topple her position as a chief engineer. Stainless is our first six-star artificer. Artificer is often considered as an unnecessary unit to build. But Stainless got a few tricks up his sleeve that makes his support valuable. So, let's see all things he can do. As an artificer, Stainless is a ground unit and can deploy a support device that is targeted to an operator to give them various positive effects. For his general stats, as a ground unit he has good stats, more than all 6 star pioneer vanguard and almost similar to a sword master guard. He can hold on to an attack from normal enemies and some elite one, but it's better you use somebody else to block the enemies. While Stainless provides support with his device from a safe position. Unless the situation forces you to do it. Although his DP cost isn't exactly cheap. But he can also become an early bloker. For the talents. His first talent determines how many devices he can deploy and carry. At E2 he can deploy two devices and carry three devices at the beginning of the battle. The devices will occupy a tile and prevent you from deploying anything until it's removed. So plan ahead. He can run out of devices. And mostly it's going to be his skill 1. But generally speaking, it's easy to keep him away from running out of device. You just need to use his skill at the right time so he can gain new devices. Not to mention most of his devices last longer and even permanent. And if his talent 2 manages to active, you don't need to worry about losing a device. Talent 2. Stainless has some chance to recycle a device. If it's destroyed, or are treated manually within his surrounding tiles. It has a pretty big chance even without potential improvement. So he's almost certainly will recycle his device. This is useful to keep him away from running out of device. Especially for his S1 device which can get instantly destroyed after the duration ends. However, oftentimes his devices will be deployed far away from him. And you can't recycle it. But all things considered, it's a good talent. And this is his potential upgrade. You can upgrade his potential to make his DP cost cheaper, so that you can deploy him and support device early. But all and all he's fine even with pot 1. And currently, artificers don't have module. Now moving to his skills. Stainless got a wide variety of skills to support your operators. First skill will make his devices give an attack buff to the target. The devices can stack so you can use two devices to target the same operator. To gain a double attack buff. The devices have an unlimited duration and can be deployed on ranged or ground tiles. Once you activate his skill, 
stainless will deal critical damage. And the device's effects will also multiply up to 4 times. With this skill active at M3, one device can give a plus 48% attack buff. So with two devices, an operator can gain a plus 96% attack. For comparison, it is bigger than WAR for an S2 plus 90% buff. Not exactly a big difference, but if you want maximum damage you can use stainless. Or better yet, use both of their attack buff as it apparently stacks. The downside of this skill is that all devices will be destroyed once the skill ends. And he can run out of device easier with this skill equipped. At E2 you can safely buff an operator with two devices at the first and second activation of this skill. But for the third activation you will only have one device. This is usually where his talent 2 will come in handy. But if you use his devices away from him, you pretty much screwed. Though you will most likely activate this skill when you want to kill a certain target. Which usually only requires one or two skill activation. All things considered, this is a great and flexible attack boost support. That can permanently increase an operator attack albeit not much. And significantly boosting an operator attack when this skill is active. Now moving to his second skill. His devices will now give 1 SP every several seconds. But it will lose 0.4% of its HP every second, whether it's targeting an op or not. For the active effect, the skill will boost stainless attack and defense. Attack multiple enemies equal to his block count. And the device will give SP in a quicker interval. But the device HP loss will be doubled. And unlike his other skills, this one will give a new device once the skill ends. This is a very flexible way to give SP to specific ops. And thankfully the device is not racist. As the device gives SP to any kind of skill charge type. SP recovery per second like for Mostima's high S3 SP cost. Offensive recovery like Thorns, Irene, or upcoming Operator Chong Yu. And offensive recovery like Mudrick S2 or upcoming Operator Penance S3. You can stack two devices for one operator to gain double SP. And activate his skill to quicken the interval. Stainless also gets better ability for himself with this skill. With more attack and offense, and also attacking multiple targets. He can now mow down some enemies on his own. Now for his third skill. This one is unique than his other skills. It will turn his device into a ground turret. Operators can attack the turret to charge its SP. After 5 hits, the turret will be ready to fire a splash physical damage. That can also hit aerial unit. While the active effect will immediately give a device to stainless. And increasing his attack and attack speed. This is the details of the turret ability. The main target will receive bigger damage while the splash damage is smaller. And will lose 2.5% HP after firing. As you can see, the turret's damage is based on stainless attack stat. It gives a good amount of physical attack. And you can give stainless an attack boost, so the turret will inflict more damage. Some other things to note. You can heal or repair the turret by making stainless, or other artificer to attack the turret. Not only they will charge the turret SP, but also repairing it by 1% on each attack. Operators will always prioritize enemy in their range, even if the turret is closer to the blue box. Damage over time like blue poison talent or ethan s1 can also charge the turret. This turret gives a lot more utility than you can imagine. Besides dealing splash damage, it works as a range extender. When the target is unreachable or too dangerous to get close. Like marksman who is vulnerable, this example with Ija s2. Or Kirin Yato S3 can also use it to extend her spinning. Mostly the turret is great to partner with a fast hitter like a marksman sniper. And in a way, you can convert marksman's low attack to a high physical attack. By making them attack the turret, and the turret will attack another target. This is useful when the target has high defense or comes in a large number. Operator with multi-target or splash damage is also good to pair with the turret. Like how Centurion can block and attack an enemy. 
while simultaneously attacking the turret in front of them to give extra damage. Operator with offensive recovery can attack the turret to charge their skill. Agent Vanguard and C Jester can attack the turret to gain DP. Those who can gain heal from attacking an enemy, like Musa or Reaper Guard, can use the turret to gain heal. It sucks when there's an invisible enemy, but Horn can't use her S1 because there's no nearby target. With Stainless, fear neither hardship nor darkness. Bleamy Shine plus her talent can gain SP by attacking the turret. And her S3 can also attack it to heal an operator. Utilizing her S3 multi-attack and plus attack speed on each hit. Jobai can attack the turret as a way to increase her attack speed to maximum quickly. And her multi-hit will also be useful to charge and attack using the turret. And many more possibilities that you can do. Like making Posey Armka activate her S2 when there's no enemy in her sight. Avoiding Mizuki S3 HP loss by putting the turret in his range. And placing more bombs with WS3 when there are only few targets in range. But there are also some downsides with this S3 turret. Though all of this can be simply avoided with correct positioning. Operator with random targeting could waste their hit to attack the turret, instead of an enemy. Operator with auto activation skills could also waste their skills by attacking the turret. And the turret is Mystic Caster Sworn enemies. And if you're wondering, Incantation Medic won't give heal if they attack the turret. For skill mastery priority. Depending on how you see him his skills could be M9 candidate. And I suggest you prioritize the type of support skill that you want him to do. I'll be just judging from the mastery gain, skill 3 win big here. Aside from an ice stat boost for stainless and SP reduction at M1. What the skill description didn't tell you is that the turret damage also increases on each mastery level. Skill 1 has the second spot for mastery gain. It will increase the device attack buff multiplier and effect duration. With two devices stacking, his plus attack buff should be the biggest one in the game. Although for stainless own ability, the mastery gain and usefulness are quite low. And sadly no SP cost reduction especially to compensate his SP lockout. When you only going to use his devices. For skill 2 you can just leave it at level 7. As each mastery level will only increase the bonus stats for stainless himself. With no significant SP cost reduction. As for his base skills, he's a lover of the red party. He requires a lot of exhausted operators to maximize his workshop ability. So, will Stainless become a good operator for your team? His skills make Stainless a versatile supporter. But the effectiveness or necessity of his support utility can be quite questionable. Mostly depending on other operators you have. Whether Stainless support will be very useful for them or not. And also, Stainless debut banner is in a tight spot. Texas Salter Limited banner is expected to be released soon enough. Which I gotta say, should be prioritized. And most other operators in his debut banner are not someone I would recommend. And as a unit himself, other than being a better bloker than other artificers. And can be a useful bloker in the supporter class in case you're being restricted. He's not really impressive. As most of his usefulness came from his devices. New players are also advised to not prioritize pulling for stainless. And fill your roster with a more focused and efficient operator first. But stainless can still be a valuable operator and rewarding to use. Especially to support those other operators to further increase their utility. And giving support in a way you didn't imagine before. That should be all. Adios.